Welcome to Eye on Parenting. Today's topic, co-parenting, or as it's sometimes referred to, shared parenting. It's a common occurrence in today's world where divorced or separated parents agree to raise their children together even though they live in two different locations. But how do you avoid conflict in such a complicated arrangement? Dr. Jeffrey Gardere, family psychologist and host of VH1's Dad Camp, is here with some advice to reduce tension and give the children the love and support they need. Yeah, Good that's morning. what it's all about, right? Absolutely. Those kids. It's all about those kids and, and it's and Co-parenting seems more and more prevalent. How, how prevalent is it today? Well, we're looking at a 50% divorce rate, right? And from that 50%, uh, a significant amount of uh, uh, people have kids. So it's something that we have to deal with. It's not like we can just say, okay, we're dealing uh, with one another as uh, you know, former husband and wife and to hell with the kids. Right. This is really about putting the kids first. And there aren't any guidelines. You know, it seems like you're really flying blind. What are some of the major challenges when it comes to trying to co-parent? Well, I think the major challenge, and we talked about this a little bit uh, offline, yep. is this whole situation of unresolved emotional feelings that we have for one another as former husbands and wives or former partners. A lot of that we still haven't worked through. We're dealing with it as we're co-parenting. So trying to keep all of that emotional baggage out of the way while we want to do the right thing for our kids. Yeah, absolutely. Does the age of the child make a difference at all if they're younger? Obviously, you know, it seems a little easier. If they're older, though, can they understand a little better? Yeah, the, 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 the conventional wisdom on this is uh, we worry about the younger kids because they don't quite know what's going on. But I have to tell you, I've talked to kids uh, five, 10, 15, even 25 year olds whose parents are divorcing or have divorced and they're still having a real hard time with it. So I, I really think the, the, the easiest answer is that it is a tough thing for any child to deal with when you have spent your life, whether three, two, 25 or what have you, where your world is about seeing your parents together. Right. Well, and it seems like one of the hard things to explain to children is why your parents may not love each other anymore. What, how, what is the best way to kind of explain the situation to children? Well, I, I, I think what you need to do is let them know that, yep, maybe parents do still love one another, but they can't get along or they're not in love anymore. And I think the easiest thing you can do is to just let your kids know that we're not getting along. We're not getting along as mom and dad, uh, as husband and wife, but we can make it as mom and dad and we'll always be there for you as mom and dad. Right. We love you no matter where you are. Exactly. <laughs> so you've come up with some tips on how former couples can sort of co-parent a little better. Let's go through some of these basic okay. rules. First up, you say don't argue in front of the kids. One of the worst things that you can absolutely do, it's a no-no, because all you're doing is upsetting the kids, you're showing them all of your foibles, and already, remember, they're dealing with the trauma of you not being together as husband and wife. So you're only adding salt to the wounds. Mm -hmm. You also say never badmouth your ex not when they're not around. Now, why is this important? Well, again, we talked about a lot of those unresolved emotional feelings, the yep. residual feelings, and it's so easy to want to say something bad or nasty or not so nice about your ex. When you do that, all you end up doing is uh, have the kids take sides, and that can't be healthy. And how about you say, speak with the kids together. What do you mean? What are some situations where you need to speak with them together? I think as often as you can, whether on the telephone, but certainly in person, when you're laying out rules or uh, what it is that you expect from your kids or how you want to represent that you will be there for them, one of the best things you can do is to speak with them together because you are providing that united front. Right, and that is another thing you say is provide a united front always present a united front. What about when you have yeah, those Yeah, and that's really, that's that's really tough because you may not agree with uh, how your partner wants to co-parent, but you better talk about it in advance and come up and be on the same page. Be a team on this because, again, it helps the kids not only psychologically deal with the divorce, but you're also much more consistent in the rules and boundaries that you set for the kids, and you're letting them know that you really do love them because you, you have enough love left for one another to work together even though you can't be husband and wife anymore right it seems like the most important really thing is be an, be an adult for your children's sake be an adult for your children and always put your kids first before your own needs and you'll always win for your kids and your kids will be winners too that is the lesson Jeffrey Je dr. Jeffrey Gardere thank you so much and now let's check out this week's eye on parenting demo 
Hi, I'm Kara Suboy. Whether you are a single parent, married, or co-parenting, you need a good way to stay organized and keep track of your child's schedule and upcoming events. Here's one great tool for staying on top of things, the Outlook Social Connector from our sponsor, Microsoft Office 2010. The Outlook Social Connector, or OSC, gives you a complete communication history when you search your emails. You can keep track of conversations about school or other activities. So if you can't remember when the school told you grades were arriving, a quick look shows you when you were emailed about it, and one click opens the entire conversation. Plus, you can share calendars with Outlook Social Connector, so both parents can see upcoming events like parent-teacher conferences and talent shows. You can even share calendars with grandparents or playgroups. And you can stay on top of activities involving your child by downloading and seeing their real-time activity in social networks. Outlook Social Connector, all that you need to share your child's busy everyday activities and keep your sanity. I'm Kara Suboy for Ion Parenting.